Good afternoon, everybody. Are you all right? Yes. Good. I want to talk about the uh, mixture of plastic and sand. And uh, it has very unique properties because the water is safe to drink. And even if you pour petrol, super petrol on it, it won't die. Then I'll give you a 30 year warranty. If you put it in a roof, it won't change color uh, by a degree. Then the innovation moved further. It made it others, but where we tried to complete the circle of circularity, it comes very dirty. It comes with all the trash that you can imagine. Now, we are the largest plastic recyclers between Mogadishu and Kinshasa. We recycle 50 tons every day of plastic. And that is converted into very many products. And in the process, we generate five to seven tons of soil every day. And we went ahead to innovate and bring in, use, it, use that soil as a substrate towards developing organic, a certified organic fertilizer to address food security. So the approach to this is what we describe as something circular because it goes all around and there is no single waste that is generated. And uh, other than that, what we look at is that even the water that we use to wash the plastic this recycle into cooling the machines that we use to carry out this activity. So when you look at the loop, there's no same waste that comes out of that factory. And uh, we the model is quite simple on how we done this to carry out this kind of approach. We have contracted about uh, over a hundred CPOs, self-help groups, <coughs> investment clubs, and their job is basically we got what you call them we use that run the 10 years. Now their role is to collect whatever plastic. And in our one of our factories, we got over 10 of those factories, but one has where we are, where we do a lot of waste plastic recycling, we've got a three acre rate parcel of land with a mini dump site in there. So when I had uh, one of us talk about zero waste, then I request that they come and see us. It's there. There's no waste that goes there. So we got a, dump, a mini dump site where we segregate plastic because there are very many types of plastic. You don't mix them when you're going to recycle them. So you go to segregate them with the LDP, the HDP, the PET, the XLP. They are very, very different types of plastic. And they've got different properties when subjected to different conditions. They behave all differently. So once that is segregated, then we know what to do with it. But the end result is that whatever that is left as precipitate, then it is what goes into fertilizer. But the journey has been quite interesting because we have over 1,000 people employed in the factory. And the number of collectors I think we have registered today are about 1,800. So one of the issues that is important today as a social entity is that we are addressing you and women and girls. It is a challenge. And uh, secondly, is that uh, we moved our innovation from just these products. And today, if any of you comes to Nairobi, you could come and see a plastic house similar to what we are sitting under. That was one time garbage, but today turned into a residential house. My home area, I just come from around. And uh, I know that uh, there's a house in Charlotte where you were just newly employed. 
you're expected to build what you call a SIPA. And in many cases, when you have your 21 day leave, it's difficult to actually complete the kind of house you wanted in that short time. And the good news is that with the kind of plastic waste that we have, it can be done, one bedroom can be done in two days. Two days and you are it. So when we look at the culture around Western Kenya where you've got to build your first house, if we move into your home, then I think we've come in as a perfect intervention towards that issue of running late, going back to duty, you've not finished your house, the cost. Now, the benefits that have come with this is that we basically manage waste. Both the plastic, biomass, if it is plastic, it touches on all construction hardware. If it is biomass, then we are into what you call the charcoal briquet space. We've got one of the factories that recycles 35 tons every day, where you pick up agricultural waste, and it's all processed, and you decide whether to carbonize. If it is carbonized, then it goes into domestic charcoal. But if it is not carbonized, then we use it as industrial products, which saves a lot of what we have gone into the downside. And uh, other than that, we have also taken this conversation to higher levels because the biggest challenge today that we have that I need to hear people talk about is ignorance of what is there. Today, I am a professor at Sangaza University. Sangaza University is in Karen. And uh, I've written a curriculum on waste management starting from paper one, certificate, diploma, data degree. Because when you look at the existing what you call curriculums, waste management and environmental sciences are very narrow place. We have the solution. You come into the university, we will train you and attach you to where waste is being turned into wealth. And that is what the kind of person that you're looking for if you go to employ you. But in many cases, waste is given a very narrow space within the curriculum. So if you go to Tangaza University, which is located on Karen South Road, there is a curriculum where you can go in and study waste management as a profession, which is not here. I like in waste sometimes written. But waste as a career is actually studied in Britain. Do you know stages? And their board is there at the Chartered Institute of Waste Management of Scotland, which I am a failure of. But when I came back, it was nothing like that. It was something foreign. But today I'm happy to announce here that there is, for those who want to pursue waste management as a career. So this answers the question of circularity and that you know that waste. Now, we also work with a number of learning institutions in ways of partnership so that we bring in the aspect of practical training. A number of them, like Wangari Magai Institute, which is all known for environment, and very soon we're going to push it from just theory into practical skills like what I've just demonstrated. So, my angle of looking at waste, let's look at waste as well and not trash. We're trying to look, I'm trying to look for organizations in Western Kenya that we should also partner in to transfer the skill and also bring in the reality. Because I know that uh, I've been involved a bit with that chalk program and uh, there is need to make it a reality, because I think what we see in the Horn of Africa, mostly at the early 
monthly year between March and February. In many cases, disaster. Today we have a program that is going to convert all the bamba farm waste in Kitale, in Narok, to convert all that into animal feed. Like when you have, in many cases, when you harvest your farm, you only take the cereal, is it? And then you leave everything. But from what we developed is that all that, if anything, simply wash the root, but the whole stem, the leaves, the cobs, and everything, we convert them into what we call pets, which can be dried. They actually dry, but they can be stocked for future use of animal feed. So in the event that the drought persists and uh, Okana County is crying, Samburu County is crying, Isiolo County is crying, that Sirikali's idea, we have the solution where the stock helps, which is very nutritious, could be given to the animals for safekeeping or to keep them healthy. And that is one area where we look at circularity as a solution to this. So the practical circularity is there. We practice it. And then the other point is that we are also trying to loop in as many county governments as we can. I know it's a challenge. It's a challenge breaking through into county governments because the bureaucracy, whatever you call it, but uh, the reality is that the solution is there. A lot of challenges were talked about when I was listening to everybody here in the morning. But it doesn't take Oscar alone. It takes, it should go to everyone. Now that we've introduced, we've introduced waste management at secondary level or at tertiary education, we are also currently working with primary school in Nairobi to inculcate the scale that when you grow up, do not see waste as garbage. Look at it and how you can convert it to turn it into wealth because in reality, that is a big, mega source of employment that the youth are creating. So why don't you join me in this noble journey of making Mother Earth as green as we found it?